Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're doing a little work on our 2003 Honda Rancher 350. What are we going to be working on? Well, we're going to take the head apart, take a look at those valves, get it cleaned back up, and then reinstall it on the machine. So if you're ready, I'll go grab a couple of tools and I'll show you how to get it done. All right guys, before we get started, this is actually gonna be a skill level two. So it's not gonna be really that involved, although you really need to pay attention to what you're doing. So watch this video carefully. Now, as far as the tools you're gonna to need, it's a pretty short list. The most important one that you're gonna to need to get a hold of is a valve spring compressor. And once you have that, all you're gonna need is just a magnet, this little pick tool, a little bit of length of rubber hose, some uh, valve lapping compound, some Prussian blue, and then just any type of grease. It really is not that specific. Now, if you would reference our exploded diagrams, that's gonna give you a real clear picture of how things are put back together. And everything is listed out as far as the parts you're gonna to need to order. So once you have your tools and your parts together, I can show you how to get it done. All right, guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we're gonna lap in a new set of valves as well as putting in a couple of new seals. Now, before I pull these valves out, I wanna go ahead and use a wire brush to clean out this uh, additional carbon that doesn't need to be in there. To clean it up, I'm leaving the valves in because I don't wanna damage or scratch the actual seat surface on the valve seat itself. So give me a couple of minutes, get this cleaned out, spray it off, then we'll get those valves out of there. All right, let's start off by getting the intake out first. What I'm using is just a little uh, small magnet. It's usually the best way to get them out. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the surface of the, uh, the stem itself. It was actually in pretty good shape, but they're really not that expensive, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them. All right, next, let's go ahead and get that exhaust out. Same thing on the exhaust, that was looking pretty good. All right, next, let's go ahead and get our seals popped off. It won't take much effort, don't push too hard on it because I don't want to damage the valve guide. All right, we're gonna compare them to the new ones. The old one, the top is just a little bit stiff, almost crunchy feeling. The new one, nice and pliable, really a kind of an elastic feel to it. It pushes back against you. That's the best way I can uh, think to explain it. So let's go ahead and get both of them off. While we've got the seals out, I want to take a look at the valves just one more time. And I'm, I'm just doing this by feel. I'm just running it in there, seeing if it will rock back and forth, which is what I don't want. This is more or less telling me if my valve guides are worn out. It's got a little bit of play in it, but not much. So I feel very confident by going with new valves that we're going to be good to go. What I'm doing now is just cleaning up the seats because we're going to put some Prussian blue on the seats and then drop our valve in there and check where the actual ceiling surface is. Make sure there's no gaps. And we're actually gonna do that before we lap them in. The lap, that's absolutely gonna assure that there's a consistent surface area being contacted in between the new valve and the existing uh, seats. All right, let's get our new intake. What we're gonna do is just pop it in there and then pull it back out. Don't turn it, just pop it in and then push it right back out. Okay, now here's what that is showing us. It's riding a little bit low right here, a little here, and right there. So we definitely need to lap this in because what that's gonna do is take out those highs and lows. And we're only talking about you know, tens of thousands of an inch here, so it's not a lot of area, but this will show how important it is to lap your valves properly. So let me get this cleaned off as well. Then we're gonna lap both of them in and then we're gonna go back and look at it again with the Prussian blue and it should be a nice solid line all the way around the valve face. Don't get any of that on your valve stem because we don't wanna eat up the guide. But we'd wanna put a little oil on the stem because we're gonna pop it in there. Then we're gonna use a little bit of uh, tubing to go over the end of the valve. And what we're gonna do just pull out on it and spin it back and forth. And what you're gonna hear is it'll have a real gritty sound to it. Wanna keep doing that, that kinda goes away. Push the valve back out, that draws in more of the lapping compound, and then we do it again. We'll do that about five or six times, and that should be enough to lap it in there. See, I kinda got quieter. 
push it out, rotate it, draw it back in. And that should do it. Now, let's go ahead and get our valve out and then carefully clean off all that compound. That's all that needs to be removed before we put it back together. The last thing you want to do is have a bunch of abrasive running around in your engine. After doing that, now you'll notice on the valve, you can see kind of a, a dull line. That's where that uh, lapping compound was, where it actually interacted with the actual seed itself. So when we uh, put on our Prussian blue, that same line should be pretty much equal all the way around with that blue uh, dye. But let's put that to the side, finish cleaning up our, uh, our seat, and then we'll do the exhaust side. A little bit of oil on the stem. And she goes. That should be it. All right, let's get that one out. Get it cleaned back up. And then we'll put a Prussian blue in there and see what we ended up with. Go ahead and do the uh, intake first. That's what I wanted to see. There's a blue line all the way around that surface. So that's what we were after. The same thing there. All right, so let's get it cleaned back up, and uh, we can start putting it back together. All right, getting the seals on is pretty simple. Make sure it's clean and dry, and then you just push them on. Be careful not to push too hard. If you put your hand down too far, those springs down at the end, it's easy to push those off. When I was spraying out the, uh, the head with the contact cleaner, I'm sure that wiped out any type of oil that we had inside the guides. So get a little bit of oil on the end of a Q-tip and just run it back in there. Take a little bit at the top, put it on the end of the, the seal. Doesn't take much, just want to get a coating on the surface. Now, let's go ahead and get our valves back in there. We'll do the intake first. So take a little bit more oil, put it on the stem. Pop her back in. When you're doing that, you want to put your fingers on the end of the seal just to make sure it doesn't try to push it off the seat. Our inner spring, outer. Let's get her set back up in there. Show you a little trick for putting the keepers back in. Take a little bit of grease, put them around the inside. That does two things. You can then hold it on the end of a pick tool. And then when you get it up there, it has a tendency to at least try to attach itself to the valve stem instead of bouncing all over the place. All right, you're gonna laugh, but Honda actually says to do it this way. All right, they're in there. And to get them to seat in, or to make sure they're seated, get a couple of uh, hammers, a soft blow, and just pop it a couple of times. That'll just guarantee that they're actually seated around the collar. All right, let's get the uh, exhaust one in there. A little bit of oil on the stem. Hold the seal as you're pushing it through. Uh, let's get our springs on there. Same technique that we used on the intake. Looks like they are in there now. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. Uh, what you want to do next is just reference our head installation video for this particular unit, and uh, that one will tell you how to install it exactly. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to get it this far, come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.